Okay, so what we have in front of us is a standard run-of-the-mill example of a problem that requires the technique of implicit differentiation. And the reason why it requires that particular technique is because we don't have y on one side of the equation, we have y strewn about all over the place. Uh, we're asked to find dy dx and we're given this equation. I'll say the general idea, but the best way to understand it is to watch what I do afterwards by example. But the general idea is to take derivatives of both sides, and every time you encounter an expression with a y in it and you take its derivative, you write dy dx. So I'll move to the side and, and write that strategy down. Um, each time you take a derivative involving y, uh, write, maybe I shouldn't even say write, I should say multiply by dy dx. And we're just thinking this. This is not obviously not a mathematical justification, but it's what's going through our minds every time we do it. But because it's not mathematical, we will now move it backstage and resume with the official sanctioned implicit differentiation. Without further ado, I'm going to differentiate both sides. Taking the derivative of x squared does not involve y, so that is just 2x. Now, Taking the derivative of xy, that's a product of two things, x and y. When I take my derivative of x, I'm just going to get 1, so I'm left with y. And now I'm taking my derivative of y. The derivative of y, we can think of that as 1, but I'm taking a derivative involving y, so I've got to write dy dx. Finally, I've got the end of the product rule, which is the other function x. Next case, derivative of y squared. Well, it's 2y, except I took a derivative involving a y, which means I've got to multiply by dy dx. Other side of the equals. Here we're going to have a chain rule, because I've got a messiness that's inside of sine. That means the first bit is going to be cosine of all the messiness times the derivative of the messiness. Let's scoot over a little bit, give myself some space. The derivative of the messiness is 1 plus dy dx. Now, that's the end of phase one, the phase that involved calculus. What we are called upon to do is to solve for dy dx as if it were a variable in algebra one. So what I'm going to do is the same thing I did when I tried to solve for variables in algebra one. I'm going to get all of the terms involving a dy dx on one side. Well, to do that, I'm going to have to distribute the right side. Cosine x plus y plus cosine x plus y d... Oh, I need more room. I'll have to zoom out. dy dx and now I can do my little green box around the dy dx and I can color this term right here uh, with a wavy blue under it. The other terms which do not involve the dy dx have to go to the right. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and write the result of this but what I'm doing is I'm moving all these yellow terms 
to the right and I am moving the blue term to the left. So I invite you to pause the video and try to do that. I'm going to do the same. And there it appears. It occurred to me I should reveal it bit by bit. So what I've done is I've revealed the left-hand side of the equation where I have this term, this term, and this term. So I'm going to pause the video again and create the right-hand side of the equation. Maybe I should zoom out first. Okay, pause the video. And we're back. All I did here was I moved the 2x and the y to their distinguished places on the right-hand side of the equation. Now, the game is nearly over. All I have to do is factor out this dy dx that we see on the left-hand side of the equation. And it's even written in a way that I can kind of cheat a little bit and just scribble these out and cleverly parenthesize. So, what do I have left? I have to take this whole business and divide both sides by the equation by whatever's in those brackets. And the audience is growing restless, but I promised dy dx, and I'm going to deliver it. dy dx is going to be the right-hand side of the equation divided by the left-hand side of the equation. And there you have it.